Hello and welcome. Believe it or not, this vintage Gary Fisher Marlin mountain bike was given to me for free. Here's the deal. My friend was talking with one of her co-workers and the co-worker said she had an old bike that she was going to quote-unquote take to the dump. Yikes. So my friend said, wait, I know a guy who fixes bikes. The co-worker said, great, he can have it. When I met my friend and her co-worker to pick up the bike, I was amazed, I mean, totally blown away to see that it was this Gary Fisher Marlin. I knew what the bike was, but I didn't know if she did. So I asked her if she really wanted to give it away. And she replied that she did, as she had no intention of ever riding it. So I gratefully accepted her offer. Now, as best as I can determine, it's a 1996 model. And for a 26-year-old bike, it's in fairly good condition. It has obviously sat for a long time. And some of the components, like the saddle, are well past their use-by dates. Even so, I look at this bike and I don't see the scratches or the paint chips or the beat up saddle. No, what I see is the potential that this bike has for being truly good again. One of the really nice things about this bike is the metallic green paint with a sort of gold undertone. Now what would you call that exactly? Metallic olive green? Anyway, the faded purple and peach graphics just scream 1990s, and that takes me back to my dance club days. And the less said about that, the better. The cockpit consists of a steel quill stem and a 570 millimeter steel handlebar with SRAM grip shift shifters. At some point, they were wrapped with this black tape stuff. It's stretching. It feels like the white medical tape you use for binding gauze. Whatever it is, it's seen its better days. And the mini grips are just totally worn out. The drivetrain consisted of a Shimano 3x riveted crankset, a Shimano Olivio RDMC16, rear derailleur and a front derailleur with its ID obscured by rust but probably also Olivio and a Shimano 7-speed Uniglide cassette yes cassette not freewheel the teardown of the bike was you know, pretty routine just a lot of busy work but if you want to see a teardown of a similar bike I will link to my 1999 Specialized Hard Rock later. One thing that I did not notice at first is that the fork is a 1 and 1 8 inch threaded unit, not a 1 inch as I assumed it was from the presence of the quill stem. Now that's important because that opens the door for a future threadless suspension fork upgrade. Once the teardown was complete, I gave the frame a deep cleaning, followed by three coats of gloss clear. I wanted to preserve the bike's patina, not because it's trendy or such, but because, much like you and I, each little scar and imperfection tells part of a larger story and history. Now at that point, I could have just reassembled the bike and called it good. But the thing is, I cannot help myself when it comes to bikes. The only one of my bikes, in fact, which I have not altered in any way, is my one previous owner, 1951 Schwinn. That baby is staying as is. But being no exception, the Gary Fisher was about to be resto modded. I used a quill stem adapter to install a 90 millimeter alloy stem with a slight rise and a 690 millimeter alloy handlebar. At that time I also installed a micro shift trigger shifter, 
repainted stock brake levers and lock-on charge grips. The wheels, front and rear, are vintage Ritchie Vantage wheels that I have had for oh years and years. In fact, I think this is the fourth bike that they have been on. They get around. Get it? Round wheels? Anyway. I mounted a pair of Bontrager Connection Trail 26 by 2.0 tires, which I also had on hand. Now, I swapped these in so that I could use a 9-speed setup, and because the stock front wheels spokes are super duper rusty. I may rebuild the wheel later, but that was not on my immediate agenda. I replaced the stock cantilever brakes with a set of linear pull brakes that I had in my parts box. Now these aren't the best ones in the world, but they'll do for now, and I do have a more robust set on order. I replaced the worn out saddle with a vintage Sella Italia Concour brown leather saddle. This was given to me by another friend of another friend last spring. Huh, a lot of that going around, isn't there? Anyway, while this saddle was intended for a road bike, I think it looks great on this bike. Moving down the frame, I installed a JG Bikes Square Taper 1x crank set and a JG Bikes 34 tooth narrow wide chain ring. Now, I've had these for a couple of years, a uh, project that didn't come to be. Now I went this route because of the existing sealed taper bottom bracket which was in good shape, and that being so, why mess with it? Way out back, I installed a MicroShift Advent clutch derailleur and a MicroShift 14 to 42 tooth 9-speed cassette. I had bought the MicroShift cassette, shifter, and derailleur oh, a couple of years ago, but I never used them due to a change in plans back then. I forget exactly what I paid for them, but I'm thinking that $150 sounds about right. Everything on this bike I reused or otherwise already owned. And I gotta tell you, I really love the way this bike turned out. The original patinaed paint looks so much better, cleaned and clear coated. And the updated cockpit and drivetrain give it a sort of a modern vibe, while the vintage saddle and wheels keep the old school look going at the same time. And I can hardly wait to get this old war horse out on the trails. And who knows, maybe I'll chip or scratch the paint and add to the bike's story. If you enjoyed this video, there is a link to the teardown and resto mod of my 1999 Specialized Hard Rock, lower left as promised. And just for contrast, there is a link to my 2019 Specialized Rock Hopper mods, lower right. As always, thank you so much for watching. I well and truly appreciate that. Goodbye and have a wonderful day.